everybody. It's Craig Syracuse. Welcome to a new episode of Walk in Faith. We're on Zoom, but I'm with my friend today, Justin Bat, who wrote a book, Daddy Saturday. And Justin and I, we met a few months ago. We were at the Chick-fil-A Ranch, which was an amazing, amazing opportunity for the Father Commission. And you spoke about your life, your personal journey. You talk about the fire that you have inside for fatherless men, for fathers in general. You spoke about your book, Daddy Saturday, and I took a copy. I went home, I read it, I loved it. But also, you have an amazing event coming up, Father's Day weekend, which I want to talk about in a moment. So, Justin, you know, and I didn't say this on the phone that day, but that day when we spoke, and I was telling you about my men's conference, which is by no way a a competition because you've blown me out of the water, but it was just that conversation that pushed me to pull the trigger on my end. So I want to thank you for, for that opportunity, just for us to talk, but really for that confidence to move forward. I thank you for that. No, you're so welcome. You're doing great work as well. So it takes multi- a multitude of us moving forward in the same direction to make it happen. I agree. And so just in case our audience is not familiar, I mean, you've done TED, TED Talks. I mean, uh, accomplished author. I mean, you've been around. But in case our audience is not familiar with your background, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I grew up in Ohio, uh, home of the etch sketch and the dum dum Sucker, a small town in, in Ohio called Bryan. Everybody knows etch sketches and dum dum Suckers. Went to Clemson for college, met my wife there. I uh, went right into pharmaceutical sales. She was a teacher, left teaching, and decided to open a bridal store in Charlotte, North Carolina. We had our daughter at the same time. We'd been married for just about a year and a half and named the bridal store after her, Hayden Olivia Bridal. And we immediately started uh, living our life in a way that um, brought about Daddy Saturdays. I was at home all day on Saturday with our first newborn daughter. Uh, she was working in her store in order to support her. We added three boys to the mix every two years. So now I found myself a corporate dad, four kids all day on Saturday, eight or 10 hours going, what do I do with these four kids? How do I make this engaging, fun, keep them alive, keep me sane and make this a meaningful interaction in a moment that we can share together. And God just really hit me upside the head and he goes, Justin, you've got a blessing or burden, inconvenience or an assignment in this time that I've given you with your kids. What are you going to do with that time? And I just grabbed the bull by the horns and said, I'm going to make this an intentional and engaged time together. Found these epic adventures with my kids in our backyard. And that's how Daddy Saturday started. My kids, you know, had dad on Saturday. They knew that. And on Wednesdays or early in the week, they'd come to me going, dad, what are we doing for Saturday? What are we doing for Saturday? And my middle son, Mason, goes, dad, what are we doing for Daddy Saturday? I said, we're naming it and claiming it. So that's what it is. So we just started doing these epic adventures in our backyard. The community took notice. Um, put some videos in YouTube, had some fun with it. And I recognized that I had been given a formula, a solution to help dads like I was be engaged with their kids while they're in the home, but also help kids who didn't have a father or father figure in their life have that presence of a father through what we call Daddy Saturday. And it's not just on Saturday, Craig, it's every day of the week. So I was asked to give that TEDx you mentioned. I learned about the epidemic of fatherlessness in our country, the lack of biological fathers in the home. Also, The fathers are physically present, but emotionally absent. And I recognized that Daddy Saturday could help both sides of that equation. And then I decided to write the book, Daddy Saturday. And the cool part about this story, Craig, is that when I wrote the book, God gave me this vision of a stadium filled with dads and kids interacting, engaging, celebrating each other. I didn't know what it was. I just, it was so clear and powerful. I put it on the back cover of the book and it's kind of been our our theme for Daddy Saturday. And four and a half years later, I can now say that the dream's coming true at the Fatherhood Festival, which you mentioned, in Canton, Ohio, at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So that's where we are today. Daddy Saturday is an international organization helping dads and fatherless kids all around the world. It's amazing because, I mean, first of all, let's say you have a goal of reaching 10 million people, 10 million dads in 10 years, right? So, I mean, that's huge. And then when you talk about your Daddy Saturdays, I mean, the average person in your backyard, it sounds like, you know, you just, uh, you know, like I would do with my son, just ride his bike in a circle. These are epic, which my son uses that word. It must be a Roblox word. But you create these adventures. I mean, you did one we saw where it was like a slip and slide. And there was another one with a quad. I mean, these are huge, like, epic adventures. This isn't something you just decide, you know, on Saturday morning, we're going to go outside and, and, you know, collect leaves. These are like adventures. But, like, I'm not, I, I guess I am, maybe I'm not, I'm not as creative as you are. Where do you come up with these ideas? Because I could come up with one or two, but... You're creating these adventures every weekend. You said very, two very important things. So the first thing is you cannot just wake up with a dad hangover and loaf your way into a Saturday and expect it to be epic. You've got to be intentional and plan ahead. It doesn't have to be 10 hours. It can be 15 minutes. 
And what I do is called R and D and it's rip off and deploy. So I go out and find, I watch YouTube. I go look at other things people are doing, right? All these crazy, you know, the dares of the day and the, the, the coolest you know, ice bucket challenge or whatever it is, the slime battle. And I just take it and replicate it and make it applicable to my kid. And oftentimes we'll turn it up a notch. If you remember that, that show tool time with Tim, the tool man, Taylor, and you know, he'd always like take it up a notch and make it more epic. That's all we try to do on daddy Saturdays too. We can take a simple idea and then how do you make it epic? But I'll tell you what I've also found. And, and I mean, I've spent 10, 15,000 hours at this point, with, if you add up all my kids and all the time with them being engaged, it's about that many hours. And so I'm not an expert on this, but I've, I've put in the, the blood, sweat, and tears to know enough. And what I've learned is it doesn't have to be expensive, extravagant, or extraordinary to be epic. This has to be intentional. And some of our most epic moments have been just literally laying in the grass or on the trampoline looking up at the clouds after spending an amazing day together. And you're just like, this is a moment. Like, this is special. That's epic. Um, but it all came by being intentional in the first place. I love it, too. And you said something, too, which we spoke about offline was the moment and something. And this happens to me. I remember, you know, I went on vacation. I'm planning this epic vacation. I'm going through exactly what we're going to do. I create the expectations. My son and I are going to go fishing and we have it all planned out. So for months, I'm focused on this memory. And throughout the months, I'm missing the moments, the moment where he holds my hand, the moment my, he says he loves me because I'm focusing so much on this epic vacation. Then I go to Florida and it rains. He's not interested in fishing. My phone's ringing. The moment or the memory that I'm trying to encapsulate for all those months where I'm not focused on the moments to create a memory, we miss those key moments in our life. And you said it, you need to be intentional. And, and when I think about Jesus is he was present. So when I go outside with my son, my phone's ringing just like yours all the time. And he gets annoyed and I put it aside and we play for those 15 minutes and I'm engaged with him. I'm not focusing on Florida. I'm not focusing on anything but that moment and those moments. And, and what I look for is when I capture that moment. And I remember in Florida holding his hand, walking on the beach and looking up. And that moment was the trip. It wasn't the seven days. It was that one moment that I'll remember and reflect on for the rest of my life. So how important is it to, to look for those moments and to be present the way Jesus Christ was? I'll give you two ways to do that. So what I found is that oftentimes um, we allow distractions to pull us away from the moment. You mentioned the cell phone, obviously that's a huge one today. But I think that, that all dads, all, all men, all parents really struggle with the tension between work and home, right? It's hard to leave work at work. Then we get home, we spend most of our lives working whether it's on in the evenings or even on the weekends or in the mornings before we, we get ramped up for our day, those moments, there's extreme tension there. And it can be hard to be present in the moment because we're thinking about the business deal or the, the email that still needs to be sent or the phone call that's coming up, whatever it is. So what I found is I've taken the business principles from entrepreneurship and the corporate world and brought them into the home. Like why do we leave mission, vision, values, goal setting, all those things in the office and not bring those into our house. So if you do that well, and set up those standards, those values, the mission, the vision, the values of your home and your kids, then it helps you really align around that. Um, we put everything on paper on purpose. So I put everything in my calendar and I've got my family uh, events as well as my work events in there. So if I'm doing a date night with my daughter or I'm doing a date night with my wife or I'm going to attend a kid's ball game, I've got that on the calendar. I've got the time that I need to leave so that I can be there, be wrapped up and be present. What that allows me to do is to say, you know what? I know that this event is important as anything else on my calendar. And so if I've got to wrap up my day earlier to be there, that means I do that. And I'm also present when I'm there and I'm not thinking about or letting things carry into that, that event with my family. Dinner time sacred in our home. We make our time around the table, very engaging. We do something called high, low Buffalo pretty much every night. Um, so again, just be intentional in those moments. A high, low Buffalo is what's your high for the day. What's your low and your Buffalo is Buffalo's run into the storm instead of away from it. What did you overcome or face or what was a challenge you had to go through during your day? And we talk about that, right? So I'm there present in those moments at that table. And it maybe it's, you know, 15 minutes, but still it's 15 minutes of direct presence, engaged time during the day. And that's very important. It's a rallying point for our family. And I think the final thing is that um, it's also important that we, we look at how we are, are forecasting out. So to your point is that we have these big expectations, these big events. And it's like you miss the small things that are right in front of you. So how do you take driving in the car? How do you take taking your kids to school, those small moments, and make those things intentional so it becomes a moment? 
right? We do hill walks with our kids and make them carry sandbags up and down our hill on Wednesdays, and they walk it every day. It's a quarter mile, pretty steep at the top, but we do a devotional. We speak to each other. We talk. It's like Jesus walked with his disciples, right? And I try to model that for them. We have, uh, you know, there's times where I've got a 100-pound sandbag on my back, and I'll take one of their sandbags away from them. I said, look, Jesus' yoke is not heavy. His burden is light. But you're going to give me your burden if you want him to take it from you, just like this. And I physically represent that. So there's all sorts of things, both spiritually and physically and emotionally, you can do with your kids. The final thing I'd say is this. Far more is caught than taught. So you got to model this for your kids. If you're modeling that you're distracted every time you're around them. If you're always on your phone, they're going to be doing the same thing, right? If you eat like crap, if you don't sleep well, they're doing the same thing. So you got to model it. And then the, the last piece, and this is super, super critical, is you don't need to be your kid's hero. You already are and you always will be. Jesus is their ultimate hero anyways. So you need to be your kid's guide. Every movie that's ever been made, you've got a hero, a villain, and a guide along the way. You need to be Yoda, the little green guy, the dad. And why that's important is because of this, Greg, and you said it so well. Um, it helps you lower your ego. Like, I can't do everything. Well, I'm no chip gains. I'm, I'm terrible at building things. Um, so when my kids ask me to build something, I got to ask for help. I got to bring another dad in who's maybe a deep sea fisherman that can do that. We don't get shipwrecked and die in the ocean and actually catch some fish, right? But I allow other men to come into my kids' lives. And here's the, here's the takeaway for your audience. It allows you to zoom out in those moments. So while another man is baiting my kids, fish hook and showing them how to do this and teaching them i've zoomed out and i'm watching my kids i'm seeing their reaction i'm understanding their personality how they react to things how they take feedback or criticism or you know or how they how they celebrate right and i'm learning about my kids you can't do that when you're too close to the trees you can't see the forest so uh, that's another huge moment is being your kid's guide and letting other men come into your kids lives to help them model that as well. You said so many things. And just the one thing I do want to go back is the modeling, is Ephesians. I think of Ephesians 6, 4, do not exasperate your children. How important it is to, to not, I, when people say, you know, practice what you preach, like you need to embody Christ, right? So if I want my son to be a follower or to be, you know, similar to the way I live my life, I need to live my life intentional the whole way. And I always talk about return your shopping cart. It's those small moments. How do I carry myself? I want my son to embody Jesus Christ because we're called, like we know, to be the mirror of Christ. And it's hard. It's hard being a father. You come home, you had a rough day, especially now with the pandemic. Like nine to five does not exist anymore because we're dealing with people from all over different countries. And I, I'm talking to people late at night, early in the morning, Saturday, Sundays. My life is completely changed but you need to be intentional. And the one thing we always remember, you say no. I found myself during the pandemic, especially now, saying no a lot more. I don't need to go to that event. I don't need to go to this function because it's taking away time from my son. And I was confused because I would say, I'm sacrificing everything for my family. How come they don't see that? And in the end, I was chasing personal dreams, desires. God was not telling me to go to all those functions. I was. It was an escape. And when I realized that, he spoke to me and I said, this is not what I'm called to do. This is not sacrifice. And I'm glad at a young age that I realized that. But some fathers, like you said, I mean, there are so many, I think it's 25 or 20 million children are fatherless. And I've been doing a lot of research on that. And I, and I know, well, they say, you know, it's divorce and they say, you know, ch children out of wedlock. But beneath the surface, why do you think there is such an epidemic of fatherlessness? I think there's two sides to it, right? So the lack of a biological father in the home, I mean, that's a deep cultural issue. Part of it's because it's been incentivized in certain areas, right, where, where fathers are actually paid to, to not be a part of the family because the single mom would get money for the kids. And so, hey, I can give you a better living if I'm not there, not a part of the family, than if I am in the family. So part of it's culturally, it's been induced over time. I think it's also in our society, you know, it's a it's a slippery slope. When you look at the no fault divorce law, when that was passed back in Reagan, Reagan's administration, divorces went through the roof, right? So now all of a sudden you got a separation of mother and father and families. Um, divorce is so common now in our in our country and even among Christians. When you look at the to your to your point too, there's the other side of that, and it's the distracted dad. It's the dad is physically present but he's emotionally absent. That is a form of fatherlessness just as much as not having a dad in the home. And sometimes it can be even more damaging because it's like dad's right there, but I can see him, but he's not there. He's an empty shell. And you know, that's really hard for a kid. That creates a deep father wound. Both of those are, are extreme father wounds that are happening. So there's a lot of factors. I think that um, 
you know, to, to not to over spiritualize this, but I think the enemy has a plan. And part of his plan is to destroy the family at the fabric and at the core. And if he can remove the father from the family, he brings the whole thing down. And so this is a plan that's been in place for a long time. And, and I feel like that's why people like you and me and the others that we know who are in this battle on the front line are trying to resurrect this thing and put the father back in the family and restore the family to its rightful place. So it is a battle. It is a physical battle. It is a spiritual battle. And it's one that um, both of us are willing to pick up the torch and go fight. I agree. I mean, the more I read, I mean, obviously it all comes back to sin, right? Generational curse, but it is, it's sin, right? But, you know, we, we can't just define it as sin because we need to break the cycle. And I think, I think getting like you're doing your event coming up, we're doing an event here on June 11th, no competition. We have NFL stars as well. Not as big as yours, but but it's really getting to that young age, that young demographic, right? Teaching them biblical principles, how we're called. I mean, I'm referencing the Kendrick brothers, you know, the mirror of Christ, teaching them biblical principles of what it's like to be a godly man, because not all of us had great role models. It was a completely different generation from when we were young, and I see myself overcompensating with my son all day, every day. I love you, I love you, I'm proud of you, proud of you. And he's going to grow up and he's probably going to resent the fact that I constantly filled him with love and emotion. And, and he's going to have a problem with that. The same way our parents or my father wouldn't really say, I love you. It wasn't sort of built into the fabric of that culture, of that era. But I knew he loved me because he was a provider, right? He was there. So it's different. So tell us about your event that I keep teasing. I wish I could be there. I'll be in Florida. But tell us a little bit about your epic event I mean, and I don't know how you're gonna to top this one. So, so tell us about it. How do we get involved? So we've got the Family Fatherhood Festival. It's fun for the whole family. And the Fatherhood Festival is taking place June 17, 18, 19, Pro Football Hall of Fame Village, Canton, Ohio. We've got an amazing lineup of players that are gonna be a part of the Fatherhood Festival. We've got several Hall of Famers. Our two commissioners are Anthony Munoz and Mike Singletary, both incredible individuals, men, husbands, fathers. We also have other NFL alumni, Hall of Famers, and some active players that'll be there as well. We don't have quite the A-list lineup that you do, Craig, in, in your role with Rolodex. We've got some good people coming in. Um, and the nice thing is that it's going to be an opportunity for a lot of people who have never had exposure to athletes at that level. They're going to have the proximity of being around these folks, you know, at, on an on-field level, see them, touch them, feel them, be a part of it. Friday night, we've got a movie night in Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium featuring American Underdog, the Kurt Warner story. Uh, which we're very excited about. We're going to do the Underdog Awards that evening, awarding people with disabilities or that have overcome obstacles in their life uh, to, to become successful in their own way and honor their calling. And then on Saturday is our big day. We've got a, an opening ceremony that then turns into rotations with dads and kids rotating through the dad zone, which is our interactive sponsor area, the dad combine, which is our on-field football drills and life skills. And then we've got the dad games, which is going to be just an absolute blast of creating those moments and doing daddy Saturday type activities that they can then go and replicate in their home. I think um, massive inflatables everywhere as well. And then the moms during that entire time will be in the mom's huddle, which will be up in the, the club level, the VIP for the mamas. And they'll be getting uh, pampered, some mani petties or things of that nature. And we'll have teach them football 101, some powder puff materials and some keynotes. And everybody will reconvene for closing ceremonies. We've got the Hall of Fame Dad Awards, which we'll be giving out then as well. Then we move into probably the most pivotal piece of the entire event. It's called Overtime. And that is where a Hall of Famer is going to be sharing his testimony uh, with the entire audience and presenting the gospel and inviting people to come and meet Christ. Uh, they'll all have a Bible for everyone in attendance and as well as resources, information. And then we're going to do a blessing of the Father ceremony to heal father wounds and help those in attendance um, share a blessing with their kids. And again, practice that, do it once, and then go home and continue to, to make that happen. Then the concert that evening is Jordan Davis, uh, singer of By Dirt, and I got an amazing country concert lineup. And then Sunday is a brunch and Hall of Fame tour um, on Sunday as well. So it's an action-packed weekend, amazing time for the entire family. We look forward to serving and making this a, a first annual, but an, an annual event every year at the Hall of Fame on Father's Day weekend. So do you see yourself doing this again next year in the same space? Do you see it growing and traveling? Here's what I feel like God's leading me to do. The Fatherhood Festival is going to be at the Hall of Fame every year on Father's Day weekend, um, but we're going to create the Family Festival, and that is going to go and travel to every other Hall of Fame for every other sport. Uh, we're going to work with a couple of NFL teams this year as well during the season, essentially some college teams, but um, we're, that's all to be determined. We've already got interest from other 
organizations that want us to come to their Hall of Fame and do a similar type of event all over the country. It's amazing. It's such a great idea. It really is amazing. And, and our event is football related. And, and I, I'm not a big fan of football, so I must have heard you say it. And then I incorporated that into my own sort of, you know, emotion. Say, oh, it's my idea. But either way, I mean, we're all doing this for the same reason, right? It's to, to bring men together. For me, it's to really is to teach children or young adults what it's like to be a godly father through biblical principles. Like when I started to learn more about how I was called and what, you know, how the mirror, to be the mirror of Christ and how I'm supposed to treat my wife and, and, and be a, a sort of a reflection of Christ in the household and following scripture. Ephesians is one that I constantly reflect on. And I always get annoyed when people say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but it does have the potential to roll downhill. Just because we were raised in a situation and circumstances doesn't mean we have to replicate that. It doesn't mean we can't break the cycle, right? I mean, it's something we need to work on. Justin, thank you. Honestly, I, this is amazing. And uh, I wish I could be there at your event. So if people want to watch it or, or you know, get connected or at least watch some of your Daddy Saturdays, how can they connect with you? How can they purchase the book? Yeah, thanks so much for asking. Uh, this was an awesome interview, Craig. You're the man, so I appreciate you having me on. Um, DaddySaturday.com is where you can find all things Daddy Saturday. FatherhoodFestival.com is where you can access tickets and learn more about the Fatherhood Festival. We are going to be simulcasting portions of the event, so we'll have our own little simulcast and simulcast the concert. So folks up in the, the Northeast that can't make it all the way to Canton, um, please join in the, the, the live version as well. That will be announced here shortly. And then you can find me, Justin Bat, on LinkedIn is the best place to access me personally. So thank you so much for this opportunity, Craig. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I, I thank you. I mean, I'm glad I got the book and I'll see you probably in December again at the Chick-fil-A Ranch where I treasure that weekend. It's such a, an amazing opportunity to be together for men that are there for selfless reasons. Justin, thank you so much. Thanks. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Walk in Faith. Always remember you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through words and actions. God bless you. for watching Walk in Faith, please log on to EmmausBrooklyn.org and please support us and support the ministry as we continue to bring the Word of God through events at the Emmaus Center and shows like Walk in Faith. God bless you.